This is Barefoot Grandpa and Owen, and today we're testing out the Airbox Series Carbon Monoxide Detector by ITIL. Yeah, this is pretty cool. ITIL is, uh, seems like it would be a really good outfit company. They're the ones that sent the uh, battery-powered reverse osmosis water filter, which I've used, and works amazing. They also asked if I could take a look at their... Carbon monoxide detector. Okay, and why is carbon monoxide important? Because you can't it's a gas that you can't see has no odor and can kill you huh yeah pretty fast too huh yeah where does it come from uh like f fire and smoke right so if we're camping where would carbon monoxide be a problem uh by the campfire maybe not the campfire because outside you got wind but how about inside Oh, yeah, like if you're cooking something with a burner, yeah. like it can fill up, you can't see it, you can't smell it. So. Right. But outside, we got wind blowing, but what would happen if you were cooking inside a tent? Uh, It would just fill up, and it, like, since the zipper only has, a, like, like the zipper in the tent or the cloth only has a little bit of room to, for it to get through, uh, it'll just stay in there. It can be really bad, and people have died cooking in tents and especially if you get snow up around the tent it's cold outside they put a heater in and they sometimes die. they never wake up so the same thing in our camper if our camper uh when we cook with our stove or put our heater on we always leave a window open and the fan going a little bit so it's really important stuff uh so this is a cool little carbon monoxide filter and we're going to do an Detector, open box not open filter Thank you. Yeah. Now, a carbon monoxide filter would be pretty cool, too, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't think one of those exists yet. Maybe. Maybe. They'll, maybe they'll come up with one. Yeah, maybe. Okay. So we're going to do open box on the Airbox Series carbon monoxide detector. Yeah. Okay. Not filter. Not filter. So, oh, open up with my handy-dandy Kershaw pocket knife. Yep. I have one of those, too. I love my Kershaw. They have, they have expensive good ones, and they also have cheap ones. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And yeah. Like, mine was really cheap. And that's that's not a sponsorship for Kershaw. Yeah. It's just because I like it. I bought that yeah. in Alaska. Okay, so here we are. We've got carbon monoxide detector. we got all of the instructions. Well, and one thing that Owen noticed was how many milliamp hours the battery holds. Yeah, 1,000. 1,000 milliamps. And we had to talk about what a milliamp is. Okay. Which which seems like a little compared to, to compared to like phones, which have 5,000, but it's a good amount because it just has like a little screen that displays like the clock yeah. and stuff because you can so, see okay. like the little lines on the. So here's the detector, not filter. <laughs> yep. We're going to open it up. Okay, ITIL. And it is USB powered. Which USB? It's a USB C. Yep. With a USB A plug, which is good because there's lots of USB A, B, probably more USB A plugs yeah. than there are USB Cs. So it's a C, which is really nice. Got a handy dandy little carabiner and a thing to hook it onto. And so we're going to read the instructions and figure out how to use it. And then we're going to go into the camper and we're going to light the camper on fire. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe. Just maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe. But we'll take a torch of some kind and see if we can set this thing off and see if we can create some carbon monoxide. But we'll probably have the window open so we don't die. Oh. We aren't going to die if we're exposed like for like a minute. <laughs> I mean, we like doing reviews, like but it's little. not worth dying for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So cool. ITIL, carbon monoxide detector. Yep. All right. Okay. This is Barefoot Grandpa and Owen, and this is part two of the ITIL carbon monoxide. Oh, I think you had a, a magnet in it. Uh, oh, it detector. Does? Yeah, it does. It does look like Yeah. It. So this is the carbon monoxide detector, not filter. Yep. And uh, Owen has already talked a lot about carbon monoxide. And the bad thing about carbon monoxide, it binds to your hemoglobin, 
instead of oxygen and it will make you move on to the next horizon. In other words, die. So carbon monoxide is very bad. We've got it here. We're testing it against this open flame, which is a propane. Yes, yeah, it's it's cool. But we've been here for about five or 10 minutes trying this, and guess what? It's not reading any carbon monoxide, which is a cool thing because it means this fire is pretty safe. Two yeah. things. Because it's propane and not like wood, so it doesn't smoke as much, which smoke seems to contain carbon monoxide. You're right. Carbon monoxide is comes from incomplete combustion of fuel. Wood. So, yeah, wood. So this is burning clean, and also what else? It's outside with air moving through. Yeah, and so, it's complete combustion. It's complete of combustion. So the cool thing is this thing, it will fit. It's got a magnet on it, and inside it's got carbon monoxide detector numbers. It's got hum humid humid detector and the uh, um and temperature and temperature. So it's eighty one degrees. And it's 58% humidity. That's pretty wet for California. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was kind of foggy today. And the battery is three quarters charged. So again, USB-C. Yep. Lasts a long time. Put it in. And this, the, what this is going to be really good is we're going to put it in the camper. So when we're cooking inside the camper or we have the Mr. Buddy heater going inside the camper, we've got a carbon monoxide detector which will tell us if it's safe or not. Yeah. So. How much carbon monoxide is too much? I don't know. I guess we're going to have to Google it. Yep. Okay. And then we'll know. And this thing's got a beeper. When it gets dangerous, the beeper yeah. goes off. You can turn the beeper off too. Also, you can also turn it off. I think you'd want to because once you open up the windows and get out to where it's safe, this thing's going to be probably really loud. Beep. Yeah, and so you'll want to turn it off. It's kind of like a fire detector, a smoke detector. So, uh, all right, that's part two of the ITIL carbon monoxide smoke. Carbon monoxide detector, not carbon, carbon monoxide, monoxide smoke detector <laughs> or filter. Yeah, it's not a smoke detector. It's a carbon monoxide filter. Detector. <laughs> detector. <laughs> all right, later, folks. Oops. Wrong one. No, this, this is Barefoot Grandpa and Assistant Owen, and Roxy's down here on her bed. We are sitting in our camper, um, and at another time, I'll give you a run through this camper, which is just amazing. Fits on top of our Ford Ranger, and we love it. And we're trying to create some carbon monoxide. Um, not something that you should do at home, and... Uh, uh, we're trying to set off the carbon monoxide alarm. And so while I'm doing this, Owen, why don't you tell us a little bit about the dangers of carbon monoxide? So how I, I searched up how much um, carbon monoxide would kill you. And it says, or like, yeah. Um, and it says like a 200 ppm symptoms of mild poisoning may appear within one, two to three hours, 400 Life-threatening effects can occur after one to two hours of exposure. 800 symptoms can appear within 45 minutes, and unconsciousness can occur within one to three hours. 1,600 can be fatal within 20 minutes. 3,200 can be fatal within five to 10 minutes. Wow. And 12,800 can be fatal within one to three minutes. So you really don't want to be in carbon monoxide. And guess what? We're reading 20 parts per million, <laughs> 19 to 20 parts per million. Oh, so it's we're not too much. Not too much. We're because still it, that only goes up to 999, nine, 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 I think. Almost 1,000. Yeah. Even so, though it has four digits. Huh? Yeah, it has four digits. So, yeah, it would be 9,999. So we're getting yeah, readings of 23 parts per million with the flame right under the detector, not a filter. And the temperature, oh, it's up to over 100. <laughs> and uh, we're at 39% humidity. So we're, we're at least getting some carbon monoxide. So you can see here that running a small flame inside the camper and everything's closed up, all the windows are closed up, we're not creating much carbon monoxide. 
Now, the cool thing is I've got a little propane heater that I use sometimes to keep this warm inside. We're going to make sure with this carbon monoxide detector that that little heater is okay and safe to use. So I don't think we're going to get to 12,000 or 200,000 parts per million. So I think we're still pretty safe. But this is a cool thing to have. So I tell, awesome. Thank you. And so as I move away, it went back to zero. Grandpa. Yes. <laughs> so I'm you're creating. Playing. So that's it for the ITIL carbon monoxide detector. Glad to have it. Uh, I could stick it up here, but everything in the truck is aluminum, so it's not magnetic. So anyway, that's Barefoot Grandpa and Owen. And Roxy had a hard day. She's down here sleeping. And be good humans. Take care of this wonderful world we live in. Be safe. Stay away from carbon monoxide. And uh, so, yeah, the most dangerous thing is carbon monoxide comes from incomplete combustion of fuel. So if you have a dirty fire, smoke, a bad heater in your home, it can be leaking carbon monoxide into your life, which is something that you do not want to have. That's it. More later, and we're having a good time. We filmed several Barefoot Grandpas today. And finish off tonight. Thank you.